ain't about being beast mode. It's about life and death mode. Life is always giving you a test. Trying to give you a way out. Trying to give you an excuse not to show up. You gotta have the mentality to show up every fucking day of your life. No matter what life throws at you. It's our responsibility to show up to the Coliseum of life. Prepare for fucking battle. I don't care what you're going through, what life's throwing at you. It's your responsibility to find your new 100%. A part of being a beast is the hunts. It's the hunt that they're excited about. They like to see the gazelles run. Then boom, they take off. Cause real lions like to hunt. They love the process just as much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. Everybody want to be a beast. And it's time to do what beasts do. You are a beast. Let others talk about how good you are, how strong you are, how fast you are, how smart you are, how successful you are. That's when you know you're a shark, when others are talking about you. It's about putting it on the line. It's about pushing yourself and giving it 110% of everything you got. I know sometimes people say they're lying, but you can't be a lion if you don't understand the rules of the jungle. Keep your commitment never to go back to the life that you once lived. Keep your commitment to creating wealth for yourself, to taking care of your children, to be more responsible. Keep your commitment to live a life of contribution, to keep your commitment to be a conqueror and to act like it and to have authority and dominion of everything in your life. One of those reasons I got on one of my tapes is life knocked you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Your reasons will help you to get back up again. You're going to face no and rejection every day, but if you're hungry enough, the world will make a place for you. You're afraid of the f***ing effort. We're all being tested. And that road to success is a bumpy ass road. Do you think you have the mindset now? Beast mode! You don't have time to step back. You got to go forward. You got to push harder. Excuses, get out of my way. That's what this is about. So you got to recognize when it gets tough, you better get tough. Easy does not count. Easy does not work. You can't cheat your way up. You got to push your way up. Not everyone is ready to be at the top. Not everyone is suitable to be at the top. If you're having a mental breakdown, then the body will believe everything that the mind is telling it to do. You got to understand, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And if the mind ain't right, then the body won't be right. You have to understand that you have to have a connection. The connection of righteousness. The connection of fighting. The connection of faithfulness in you and your abilities and your strength and your honor and your integrity. Everything that you do on this moment counts in this place. You can't wait for someone else to push you through it. You got to push yourself. You are born, and you are born to live and fight. So on this day, and for the rest of your life, if you're working, work a little bit harder. You can't do easy. There is no easy in success. There is no easy in pushing that weight. There is no easy in running that extra mile. If it's easy, why are you doing it? If it's easy, how are you growing? If it's easy, how are you gonna be your best? Suffer now and get the rewards later. Don't ask for it, take it, it's yours. Go get it. If you believe in the possibilities, then make it work for you. Now you got to also understand this. It ain't gonna be easy. It's not gonna be a walk in the park. There's always more to give. You got to be willing to sacrifice. You got to be willing to hurt. You got to be willing to yell out. Whatever it takes, 
Keep pushing forward. Don't you give up on your life. Don't you give up on those reps. Don't you give up on giving it what it takes to get the most of yourself. Some of you right now may be wondering, why is this guy yelling? I'm not yelling, I'm making noise. I'm making noise to scare away your excuses. I'm sounding off because maybe that weakness doesn't understand the power that you possess. I know for myself, if I got to shout it out, I'm gonna shout it out. I'm not gonna let things hold me down. I'm not gonna let people tell me I don't count. I'm not gonna let this place of business tell me I have no business. Yes, the voice, the power, the passion, the love, everything that I have inside, I give it to you. I give it to the listener. I give it to the weightlifter. I give it to the marathon runner. I give I give it to the swimmer, I give it to the Zumba dancer It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from When the time comes, you must recognize that you got to be better You got to be tougher, you got to be stronger Because nothing that did not create you cannot break you Be the best of yourself, be the strongest of the strongest Don't let anything or anyone hold you back because you have it, it's all in you. Possess it, love it, live it, give it all you got. And from the bottom of my heart, be productive, stay strong in it, no excuses, and conduct your business. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you wanna go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you gotta break yourself off, the amount of mental pain of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. When I was 297 pounds and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to me even to this day was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. I thought then, 297 pound, working for Ecolab, spraying for cockroaches, making $1,000 a month. I thought that was me at my 100% potential. Come to find out, a few years later, I wasn't anywhere near that. 106 pounds less, graduate Navy SEAL training, went on to do all these other things. Looking back on that, that was me trying hard. That's why people gotta understand what is in us, we have no idea until we start trying hard. And I mean really trying hard, when you're obsessed with, hey, this is my new norm. My new norm is that, wow, this isn't always fun. It's not always meant to be fun. And that's when you know you're trying hard. Is that, and so people listen to us that maybe are at 20% or 30%, you know, about, yeah, I'm, I'm going hard, I'm going max, and yet they're not seeing the results. Like, how do they actually shake themselves out of that? We're all in a battle with our own brains. That's all life, that's it's, all life is. It's the most powerful thing in the world, is your own brain. It can work for you or against you. And as, as opposed to focusing on all those bad things that happened to you, all the things you didn't have, the people that called you names, all the stuff in Brazil and Indiana, and you start thinking, wait a second, I just visualized this, and now I can take it to the next level, next level, because the visualization got you through the seal team. It did. And I was able to visualize the end. So, so before, so when I was 297, and I was all fat and out of shape, and I couldn't run a quarter mile, and I was drinking milkshakes and eating boxes of donuts, I visualized, man, how would it feel? For a brief moment, I was, so there were 22 guys that graduated. I watched this segment on TV about these guys going through Navy SEAL training. And I couldn't even, I, I wasn't a great swimmer, I was afraid of the water, all this crap, man. But at the very end, it says 22 guys, this command officer's up there and he gives this great speech. I was like, man, I wonder. So I started visualizing me being the 23rd guy in these dress whites, sitting there with these guys getting that Navy SEAL, you know, graduating this Navy SEAL training. I was like, God. So I put myself there. I was like, man, that's, that's an amazing feeling. I put myself there at 297. 
not even able to do anything that these great men were doing. I said, man, if I could feel that, that would change my life. If I could just feel that one, it's, it, it lasts for one second. You get that certificate, you walk across the stage, and what's next? But I didn't know that then. My mind was that I thought I lived in that moment forever. So I said, wow, man, if I could just feel like this. If I could feel like this. And what was that feeling you wanted so bad? Was that no. Victory. I wanted to win. Not like beat somebody else. It wasn't about that. I, I, I just wanted to go the distance. Everything in my life, when something got hard, I quit. If it was reading, that's why you know, I wasn't great at reading, I wasn't great at writing, so I just quit. I couldn't catch on as fast as you. I had to work harder than you, so I quit. You know, I wasn't great at things, so I quit. You know, I'm, I'm not good at this. Like, man, if I could just go that distance, that extra mile, to just go, just, just to finish. I want to finish. I want to feel victory. And victory for me wasn't winning, it was just finishing. So I said, you know what? If I could feel like these guys feel, it would change my life. But what I realized, the best feeling I had was when I was by myself trying to lose this weight. I had, I had to lose it in literally less than three months. 106 pounds in less than three months. And literally, I started feeling victory just by putting myself in the battle. It wasn't about going to Navy SEAL training. It wasn't about being the 23rd guy in that chair. I started realizing, man, just by going to war with myself every day and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles. So it wasn't about losing 106 pounds. Me losing five pounds was an accomplishment. Me losing 10 pounds and then 50 pounds. And then the more I did this, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized these guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I had no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. And then through that, all these different tools started coming up. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. We all look for toughness. We all want it but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, whoever hear this, you will not find it. So how does a lion become the king of the jungle? His mentality. You have heard it said that lions are the king of the jungle, but have you ever stopped and asked yourself why? How can he be the king of the jungle? If he's not the biggest, the elephant is probably one of the biggest. He can't be the fastest because that's a cheetah. He can't be the smartest. So he's not the biggest, the fastest, or the smartest. So how does the lion become the king of the jungle? What separates the lion from the rest of the animals that crowns him as the king of the jungle? His mentality. That's the only difference of a lion and an elephant. It's the way a lion thinks. When a lion walks up and sees an elephant, he thinks lunch. An elephant. I'm trying to give people a different thought process of life where failure, hell, disappointment, discomfort is a great learning tool. And many people don't understand that, but it's these few moments in life that you have. Like for me, I always talk about it. Rocky won round 14. That one two minute and 13 second clip of Rocky getting up when Apollo knocked him down. That one clip when I was going through a very bad time in my life, I saw what I wanted to be. And it wasn't a guy that won. It wasn't a guy that won everything he did. It was a guy that kept getting up after being knocked down. So I realized if that two minutes and 13 seconds changed my life, that's all it was. I saw something that I needed to be in the world I was living in. Maybe my story will give someone the two minutes and 13 seconds they need to change their life. 
Everybody's got a story. We don't share it on social media. We share our nice life on social media. We have, we all have a dungeon. I'm just willing to talk about mine. Mental toughness isn't something that you sample. It's something that you live in every day. Whenever hardness comes, and you don't know what it is, it may be different for you than it is for me, but you go back to your insecurities. And then when you go back to your insecurities, you then look for comfort within those insecurities. And we all look for that cookie that your mom used to give you when you were sad, when you were sick. We look for our wife or our husband. We look for comfort. It's in those moments you must retrain your mind to think differently in health. The mental standard is you must know how far you've come. I walk in a room now and I know the hours and years and decades I put into David Goggins. That's something, it's not on the wall. It's not a trophy on the wall. It's not a medal on your neck. I don't care how you perceive David Goggins because through my journey, I figured out the one piece I was missing. I thought it was cars. I thought it was women. I thought it was money. I thought it was everything. The one piece I was missing was me having the courage to face myself. Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn, do hard work, and I can beat the valedictorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day mm -hmm. than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy, that, that valedictorian studied for an hour, and you know I caught you. I have the work ethic to catch you. That's where David Gagas got really invented. Yeah. Was at a kitchen table with 20 spiral notebooks that were empty, and then they were full. And when you can go through that, I still have them in my storage unit. You go through these spiral notebooks of your life, and you realize this is how I learned. This is unbelievable. It wasn't until I got real sick and my life got real quiet. I, I went from running 205 miles in 39 hours to I couldn't get out of bed. My life was taken from me. And that's wow. when I realized I hadn't taken time to think about what I'd done in my life. I'd done all these things, but there was no finish line. I finished a race of life and I wouldn't even receive my medal. I'd go on. <laughs> I get in the car and I go. When I started figuring out life, that I was, I was leaving so much in the tank, once I realized, my God, man, I was this dumb, fat kid being bullied, and now I'm a 180 pound person, lost 106 pounds in less than three months. Learn to read, learn to do this, learn to do that. I was like, I need more. I was fueling my mind with everything. And I never took time to say, my God, you came from this hell, and you're here. I had come, 8,000 miles from where I started. But if you never know that, you're still in a $7 a month place. So it's that quiet place. It's that place by yourself. It's those hours and years and decades by yourself in the grip of life. When life has you by the throat and choking you out and you're sitting there calm because you're trying to figure it out. You're not panicking. You're not quitting, you're not throwing in the towel. You're saying there's a way around this. And when you figure it out, when life has you gripped in advice and you can figure that out, that's when you overcome. That's when you overcome. The journey getting there was harder than going through it. Yeah. You know, so that's the whole thing about life, man. It's, it's, it's that journey that, that makes you who you are. have fallen, when you have made a mistake, the worst thing you can do is criticize yourself. At the end of the day, life can be very painful. We can experience loss and worry and the insomnia of reoccurring heartbreak and hardships. It is inevitable. It is self-compassion 
that gives us the power to face our failures, to face our fears, to face our insecurities, to face what we don't like about ourselves and come out on top. When you're down, find a way to get up. I've been there. I go through it like anybody else. But I have a job to do in this world, and so do you. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. Evaluate where you are. Look at it, assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What role did you play? All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. If you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. I'm telling you from personal experience, I know what my life was like when I put in 55. I know what it was like when I didn't try. I know what my life was like when I didn't care. I know what my life was like when I didn't have any dreams or any goals. Like, like I didn't want anything. I know what my life was like. Now I'm putting in 120, baby. You put in 120. Not only does it affect your life, it affects your family's life. It affects your friend's life. It affects your community's life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to get from where you are. I'm challenging you to stop settling. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to stop accepting the life that was given to you. I'm challenging you to give 120%. Are you hearing me? Trying is not good enough. Trying is not going to get you there. We need potential. We need application. We need dedication. We need motivation. We need discipline. We need to understand that work must be applied. And even when you don't want to do it, find a way to do it anyway. I'm coming back. And I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. If you are going to win the fight for your future, then you are going to have to master self-compassion. Face the conflict. Embrace rather than avoid challenges. And you don't give up on yourself. Do not give up on yourself. When you find yourself criticizing yourself, negatively comparing yourself to others, try to find inspiration in their successes and strengths instead of feeling threatened. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. An elephant thinks run. The animal kingdom respects the lion more than any other animal in the jungle. You see, lions hunt during storms, and they do most of their hunting at night. They hunt during storms because the noise and the wind makes it hard for prey to see and hear them. That's the lion's mentality. And it's all mentality. Lions walk around fearlessly, and they are in charge of their own destiny. I'm going to need you to tap into your lion mentality and conquer your territory. You do not have to be the biggest. You do not have to be the smartest. You do not have to be the fastest. But you must adopt the mindset of a lion. Have the love for your grit. Have the love with every rep that you push out. It is up to you to get the most of everything that you worked so hard for. What is the lion's mentality? Fearless courage, bravery, leadership, never willing to surrender, and will fight unto death. Do you have a lion's mentality? Are you prepared to work? Are you prepared to dig? You got to fight, you got to push, you got to give everything you have. All you need is the power, the strength, and the tenacity to give it everything you got. Maybe you're just buried in debt, bills. Maybe you need to stand up for something you love or believe in that others don't understand. Don't stop, do not give up, do not give in. Be courageous, be fearless in going after what it is you want to manifest in your life. Maybe you have tried time and time again and nothing has worked. Maybe you have become discouraged because you have been on the hunt for your goals for years with no rewards. Let me share something with you. Lions only hunt two hours a day and sneak the other 16 to 20 hours. 
A lion knows within those two hours they have to give it everything that they have and everyone better get out of their way because they're going to destroy anything in their path. You must keep hunting. You must keep fighting. There's no guarantee that anything will pay off today. But if you keep going, there are possibilities. The only guarantee is failure if you quit. The guarantee of missing out on your next opportunity and creating the life that you claim you want for yourself. It ain't gonna be easy. It's not gonna be a walk in the park. There's always more to give. You got to be willing to sacrifice. You got to be willing to hurt. You got to be willing to yell out. Whatever it takes, keep pushing forward. Don't you give up on your life. Be brave. The lion is brave. Lions are ready to face danger and pain and they go in 100%. Lions cannot afford to second guess their ability because it could cost them their life. How different would your life be if you were as brave as the lion? What could you accomplish? What would you attempt? What if you decided to believe in yourself and the gifts that you possess? How far could you go? How far could you climb if you just believed in your abilities? What sets you apart from the pack? Once an obstacle confronts you, you're going to kick it down. You're going to overcome. You're going to rise. If you trust yourself, it will come to you at the right time in which you need it. I have too much to accomplish to be satisfied with where I am right now. Prey doesn't lie there waiting to be eaten. Prey runs, jumps, and does whatever it is necessary to survive the unbreakable bravery of a lion. The lion doesn't stop fighting because if prey puts up a fight. How would your life change if you continue to fight in the face of adversity? What dreams would you accomplish? What barriers could you break down if you kept fighting even though life is putting up a fight? You're responsible for your results. You know what's best for you and only you know what it requires to live the life you want to live. You are enough and you have what you need to succeed. You are enough. You're equipped for greatness. You're powerful beyond your greatest imagination. This is the now, and I want to see you working. I want you to dig. I want you to feel it. I want you to struggle. I want you to hurt. I want you to bleed. I want you to fight, because this is that time. Show the world, and show up, and show out. You've got to understand that it takes grit, passion, and determination to get to the level of where you want to be. Beyond the sky, there's a great big universe. Now what are you going to do about it? Be brave. Never surrender. Only you know which path to take in each moment of your life. You must approach the path with bravery. Never surrender. Lions never surrender because they have heart. Lions are the king of the jungle and they cannot show any signs of weakness. Lions do not make excuses, they execute. And no matter how outnumbered they are, they are willing to die for their dignity. Do you have what it takes to keep going? Do you have what it takes to go that extra mile? Do that extra push-up? Run that extra lap? Lift that extra weight? What if you don't surrender? They may be smarter than you. They may be faster than you. They may be bigger than you. But because you have the mentality of a lion, you will win. You will not be dethroned. You will not be defeated. You will not be detached from your purpose. You will have everything you want because there's a lion within. But I'm king of my jungle because of my mentality. Everybody gets knocked down. No matter how tough you think you are, you're gonna fall. And when you fall, sometimes you fall real hard. But that ground is a hard surface. And I'm going to tell you something, it ain't going to move because you're laying on it. So you need to rise up and you need to rise above it and you need to start moving. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you're under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Stop half doing stuff. Stop putting forth 50% effort, 60%. Look, stop. 
Do it right or just don't do it at all. Are you hearing me? Do it right. There's a lot of people walking around today. They have unchecked rage, unchecked aggression, unchecked anxiety, fear, insecurity. You're going to have to care enough about yourself to face it and find a resolve. You got to find out what's the next things you need to be doing. How are you going to push it to that level and go beyond it? How are you going to maximize your time? How much energy are you going to put into this craft? Everything you have, everything you are, everything you're doing, like it's, it's 78. And what I need you to do is I need you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, come on, quit, stop playing. I deserve to see what my life would look like if I gave 120%. Stay dedicated. You've got to keep on pushing forward. You got to keep on fighting the good fight. You got to put aside the excuses because excuses won't lift you up. Excuses won't give you the power that you truly need. You've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not gonna let this get me down. I'm not gonna let this destroy me. When you get knocked down, how long are you gonna stay down? When you lose your job, when you lose that loved one, regardless if it's your husband, your wife, your child, whatever it is, do you have the ability to go through the hurt and the pain of that loss? Regardless of what you're going through, the best time you know that you are strong is when you're at the weakest point of your life. I want you to see yourself in your mind's eye and say to yourself, I love myself unconditionally and I forgive myself. If I knew better, I would have done better. To win the war for your future, then you are going to have to master the muscle of self-compassion. When you are so far down that hole, you looking up and you don't see no light but yet you know there's an end to this darkness. That's when you'll find out just how strong you really are. Just keep moving forward. If you think that you're going through something so bad right now, wait until tomorrow if tomorrow comes for you. Look at the person next to you. Look at people all over the world if you ever come in contact with certain individuals and ask yourself, are they going through a lot more than what I'm going through? Because honestly, there are always going to be people that are going through a lot more than you're going through right now. Remember the past, but do not live in the past. Every mistake you have made up until this very moment, forgive yourself. With forgiveness comes freedom. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? This is a process, and you have to hurt just a little bit so you can understand what it means to be strong. So don't give up on your hopes. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on yourself. We all have two people. We all have two people, and I'm not saying you're crazy. We have the easy voice. That's that voice that we all love. That's that very comfortable voice that, that's that mommy holding you saying, it's gonna be okay. Doesn't care how good you are, just loves you. Just loves you no matter how messed up you are in life. So that's that one voice. This other voice that we walk very far away from is a voice saying, hey man, you ain't doing shit. So we try to get this voice out of our head completely. And we live over here in this land. So what you have to do first is turn up this voice over here. The voice saying things to you that aren't nice. That it's in our head saying, you know what man, dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. I'm not saying to put yourself down. I'm saying listen to the truth. And the truth isn't in the 
The truth is in this other part of your brain saying, look, man, you're wasting a bunch of percentage here. We have 80 more percent that we're not tapping into because in this other 80% is suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness, and then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you gotta go through all of this. So a lot of us know that. I can get over here, but over here, man, this is much better because I gotta go through this journey that is not fun. This, this from 20 to 100%, this shit in, the, in between is not fun. So we decide to live over here. So everybody goes, how do we do that? You know exactly how to do that. You know exactly, it's, it's not a magic trick. There's nothing I talk about that's a magic trick. It's all back down to a very primitive mindset of we just have to do. It's like breathing. Breathing becomes normal. Like, we don't know that, that, that we're doing. That's how you have to live your life.